Okay guys, so I'm back again with question 2 on Newton's laws of motion. And as you can see there, the first question says, state the Newton's third law of motion in words. So the Newton's third law of motion in words states that when a body A exerts a force on body B, body B exerts a force of equal magnitude in the opposite direction on body A. So let me just write it down. So this law applies to situations like this. If you've got an object, let's say you have a book on a table. This is our book on a table. Then the book is going to apply a downward force as a result of its weight. And then the table is also going to apply an upward force that is equal to the weight on the book. So you can see these two forces, the normal and the weight, are equal and they are in opposite direction. That's what this actually means. You can also think of it in electrostatics where you have a positive charge and a positive charge, positive charge and a negative charge. These charges are repelling one another and the force that is exerted on this charge as a result of, this, of the other charge is going to be equal, this force is going to be equal to another force, the, this other side, and they are in opposite directions. Same thing with this, uh, these are going to attract, so since they are going to attract, the forces are going to be like this, and this force here and the other force, they are equal but in opposite directions. So that's the third law right there for you. Okay, moving on to question 2.2. They're asking us to draw a free body diagram of the 1 kg block. So what I suggest here is you draw the forces on the uh, diagram that you're given in the question paper and then you transfer that diagram onto your answer script. That way you won't make mistakes, especially on a slope with the weight and normal force. That usually happens. So it's very important that you do so. So let me just quickly draw the forces on my diagram that I'm given in the question paper. So I'm going to represent the box with a dot because this is a free body diagram and all my forces are supposed to be pulling forces. So I'm going to start with my normal force which is perpendicular to the surface. Very important. So I'm going to draw my weight which is always vertically downwards. And I always tell my students that the weight is always vertically downwards and it's always going to cut the lines of your answer script at 90 degrees. And then I'm going to draw my applied force, which is already there, F applied. And then after the F applied, I can see there is actually tension force downwards due to the pulling force of the 4 kg block. And since there is friction in this question, then that means I'm going to have frictional force going downwards because the applied force is going upwards. And that's why they say in our statement there, so this is my frictional force, which is Fk. Then now I will know that I have completed my question because I can see here we are allocated five marks for the forces, hence the number of marks are supposed to be equivalent to the forces that you drew here. As you can see, there are one, two, three, four, five forces. No more, no less. Then now I can transfer my diagram to my answer script. So this is question 2.2. So representing my diagram or my 4kg block as a dot, I'm going to draw my slope as a guideline. I'm going to draw my normal force perpendicular to the surface and my weight vertically downwards. And then thereafter, I'm going to draw my applied force parallel to the plane of motion, Fa, and my tensional force parallel to the plane of motion too, including my frictional force also parallel to the plane of motion. So those are my five forces. So I forgot to label the normal force. Very important to always label your, your diagram. If there is no label, then there are no marks, as you can see here, a labeled free body diagram. Let's move on to question 2.3. So question 2.31 says, calculate the kinetic frictional force of the 1 kg block and the surface. So 
we want the frictional force for the 1 kg block and one thing that you have to take note of here before you even calculate using our equation of course that we're going to use is fk is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction because the object is in motion times the normal force we have to have this and this so you can see we actually do have the coefficient of kinetic friction but we don't have the normal force and we get it from the diagram or calculations from the diagram and from the diagram as you can see here the normal force is not equal to the weight because they are not in the same plane in this or in other words this block is on a slope so many people usually make that mistake so in other words here on a slope you must know the normal force is not equal to the weight i'll write it here the weight is not equal to the normal force or the normal force is not equal to the weight either way and so in actual fact our normal force is equal to the component of the weight in the y-axis or wy or w parallel uh, from other textbooks so that means the first thing that we have to do is to actually find the component of the weight in the y-axis and we're going to do that by resolving our forces so if we are going to do that we have to form a right angle triangle as you can see here i'm going to do this so this will be our w y and this will be our w x remember this angle here is also 30 degrees as the slope so as you can see with this triangle here let me just redraw it here neatly we have our weight vertically downwards then we have the component of the weight in the x-axis i'm getting this from the diagram there just look at the diagram and then we also have the component of the weight in the x-axis and this is 90 degrees this angle is 30 degrees so as you can see from this diagram here resolving the forces we are going to use so tor so since we want uh, wy and w wx so we want wy and w so this is hypotenuse and adjacent so it's going to be cos so cos Theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse and cos theta is equal to adjacent is our wy and hypotenuse is our weight and this will give us an equation wy is equal to w cos theta. This is our equation right there that we need or this is the equation that gives us the the y component of weight which is equal to the normal force right so in other words we are saying the normal force is equal to wy which is equal to w cos theta great let's move on to the calculation so we can actually substitute this in our equation but before we do that we also have to take note of the fact that w is equal to mg so substituting these two equations into our first equations is going to be the kinetic frictional force is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal which is w cos theta and w is mg so it's going to be mg cos theta i substituted for the weight here with mg this will be equal to our coefficient of kinetic frictional force we can see for the 1 kg block it's 0 0.29 so it's going to be 0 0.29 times the mass the mass of the object is 1 times gravity or gravitational acceleration 9.8 times the cosine of that angle which is 30 degrees this will give us 2.49 newtons as our answer okay so for the uh, 1 kg block I'm going to draw my slope and then I'm going to represent my 1 kg using a dot. Normal force, weight, we have applied force, the tension parallel to the plane of motion, the frictional force also parallel to the plane of motion in the opposite direction to motion. Okay, then we have the 4 kg block again on a slope and then we're going to 
represent our object as a dot, we do have the normal force, the weight vertically downwards, the friction of force too, and the tension. So these are two free body diagrams. And then now we are going to formulate our equations. Okay, let's formulate our equations based on the free body diagrams and we are going to look at the forces that are in the plane of motion or that are not at 90 degrees to the plane of motion. So for the 1 kg block we have these four forces, the tension, frictional force, weight and applied force. The normal is not going to be involved in the motion of the object because it's perpendicular to the surface. So using Newton's second law, F net is equal to the mass times acceleration. Formulate the equation, F net is the sum of all the forces in the plane of motion. So we're going to resolve the weight into Wx and hence Wx is the one that is going to be parallel to the plane of motion. So our net force is going to be equal to the sum of all these forces. For I forget, I'm going to be taking my upward direction as positive and downwards direction as negative. So the net force is the sum of all the forces in the plane of motion. Hence it's going to be um, F applied plus the tension plus kinetic friction of force plus Wx. All this will be equal to the mass and the acceleration. And take note, Wx is going to be equal to W sine theta, which is equal to mg sine theta. Substituting in the equation, applied force is equal to 40 newtons. And then the tension is downwards, it's negative. We don't have the value. And then the kinetic friction of force is downwards, it's also negative, and we calculated it previously, 2.46 newtons. The x component of weight is also negative, so it's going to be minus the mass is 1 times g is 9.8 times sine theta, which is sine, the angle theta is 30 degrees. This all equal to the mass 1 times the acceleration. Simplifying the equation, we're going to get 32.64 minus T being equal to A or 1A. That's our equation. All right, so equation 2 for the 4 kg block is going to be equal to F net is equal to mass times acceleration. Our net force is going to be between the tension and the frictional force and the weight. In other words, the x component of the weight. We are going to resolve again for Wx, as you can see, is still opposite. Hence, it's going to be sine 2. Our net force is going to be equal to the tension is positive plus the frictional force, which is going to be negative, plus Wx again, which is equal to the mass times acceleration. I'm going to continue to the left. Our tension, don't have it, is minus the frictional force. We are given here frictional force for the 4 kg block is 10 newtons. So it's going to be minus 10. And then minus Wx is the same thing. It's going to be mg sine theta. So it's going to be the mass is 4 times 9.8 times sine 30. All this is equal to the mass for A. If we simplify this, we're going to get T minus, minus 29.6 being equal to 4A. This is our equation 2. We solve the two equations simultaneously. We substitute for A. So substituting 1 into 2, the tension minus 29.6 is equal to 4 times the tension, 4 times A, A is equal to this, 32.64 minus tension. And if you solve for the tension, you see tension is going to be equal to 32.04. Newton as your final answer. Thank you guys. If you have enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.